Somebody said to me yesterday that I was exceptionally excited about the prospect of getting a box from the Royal Mint. And, well, they were right, because finally we now have got the boxes that we were promised nearly a year and a half ago for the Royal Tudor Beast sets. Two of them have just arrived today, so let's unpack them, let's review them, and let's see whether or not they were worth the 18-month wait. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here, and welcome to this week's In Focus Friday. Now normally we look at cool things made of silver or gold, but I have a sneaky suspicion that there's no gold or silver in these big giant boxes that I've just received from the Royal Mint. But there will be boxes, so we're going to be unboxing some boxes, and these are important boxes because they've been delayed massively from the Tudor Beast series, and it's caused quite a lot of contention with a lot of people out there collecting the series. But it looks like the boxes are finally here, so let's have a good close look at them. Before we dive in and do that, a quick reminder that we are putting up one of the 90 degree rotation Britannia Error Coins for auction over on the Silver Forum. Bidding is already at £320, but I think it can go a lot higher. I think these are really going to be really rare coins out there. So if you want to get involved and you want to find out more, or if you just want to watch the auction and find out what happens, there's a link down in the description below. You can join up to the Silver Forum for free. You don't have to pay to be a member. If you don't pay to be a member, you won't be able to see that listing until tomorrow lunchtime. But then it will be visible, public, and everybody can see it. So links down in the description below. If you want a chance to, well, if you want a bid to win and own one of these error coins, then do let us know and we'll see you over on the forum. But for now, let's unbox a box. Now, I've got two here. Uh, I've left the outer packaging on one because that's how it came. It just came like that. Normally uh, with Raw Mint you get um, your sort of internal boxes with the little QC sticker and the barcode on it there. But um, they didn't put it in another box, they just literally wrapped it in this. That's okay because these are quite good boxes, but I am going to say that I think more care could be done for the packaging. Perhaps we could have had a little bit of a better um, you know, outer box to really protect these. I'm just going to open this out of camera because there are invoices floating around on the outside. I suspect both of these boxes will be exactly the same. Yeah, there was an invoice, there we go. Top tip for YouTube unboxings, don't, uh, don't show an invoice with all your details. So, without further ado, let's open up and see what these boxes are actually look like and will they have been worth the wait? Right, okay, there's more packaging. I mean, this is kind of the thing with the raw mint, but it is nice to see that there's some more internal packaging to protect the boxes. For those long-term viewers of mine, you'll know that I've had a delivery of a box before from the Royal Mint um, that was in really bad shape, so hopefully this won't be the case with them. I haven't seen these before yet. Uh, it looks like it's going to be the gloss black, gloss finish um, boxes that we've seen before from other sets, and uh, they are really nice display boxes, I have to say. Um, they are very un-YouTube friendly with the high gloss finish, So, uh, but here we have the beautiful raw mint box and I don't think there'll be any silver in here and um, yeah I was uh, I was right there's no silver but what we do get is a nice uh, is I was hoping there'd be a dis you know like a certificate or something in here or an information booklet but we literally just have a display box now elephant in the room here this looks almost exactly like some of the other boxes that I've seen from the raw mint in the past and unless this other one is different and the only things that I think that will be different from them will be the trays and the size of the slots for the trays um, the one that I've just opened was for the two ounce silver proofs which should theoretically also fit the two ounce silver bullions um, so let's see if this one is any different but I don't think that it will be looks like it's pretty much exactly the same. Let's see if we can get this out. And yes, again, no little certificate in the bottom there. That's a little bit of a shame. I kind of would have hoped that they would have had at least like, not like a certificate of authenticity, but ow. <laughs> YouTube, that's what it's all about. Little errors like that. Um, <clears throat> anyway, back on topic. What I would have hoped to have seen would have been a little, um, little information booklet about the Tudor Beasts. That would have been really nice. But you can see 
There's the big old window that I film next to that gives me all the beautiful natural light on my videos. Really good quality boxes. Um, I think these are lovely, they're beautiful. Uh, they were one of the reasons why I wanted to get this series as a continuity in the first place, because they're free. I mean, it's inverted commas free, isn't it? Because you're paying a lot of a premium for the uh, the coins themselves. But compared with other proof coins, they're the same price. So these are essentially for free. And um, the plan originally, back when they first came out in, gosh, was it 2020? I can't even remember. End of 2020, I think it was. The plan was to get hold of um, three of the one ounce silver proofs and a few others because I'm doing some of the other weights um, in that uh, as well but to get those continuities so that I could get the boxes and then the plan would be sending at least two of the three one ounce silvers that I get off to grading so we've got some examples of PS 70s hopefully and 69s and then have one set which is in the box and nicely displayed and then the plan was because most of the time the diameter of the coins is the same for the bullion is to have a nice display unit nice display box for the two ounce silvers, and that would have been good. And then you have one box left over, and that leftover box can be maybe flipped on eBay. Now, what I will say is that there's probably gonna be a lot of these boxes out on eBay in the next couple of weeks. I would be surprised if they're not already up, quite frankly. And um, the thing is, you can't get this display box unless you purchase it directly from the Raw Mint, um, and, you know, for the, your set now. Like, that's it, if you've got the set, and the continuity, you're going to get it. But if you're just buying them as you go now because you didn't do the continuity at the beginning but you're now you're logging on every time and buying them, you can't get this without paying for it. So there will be people out there selling their boxes, doing a similar strategy to me, sending coins in for grading. You don't need a box for those because they'll be in slabs. And um, and that's, I think, quite cool, quite you know, an interesting strategy, something that I'm planning to do. But I think if you want to get best value for your box, then you wait a little bit because it's going to be a few... Yeah, no, this box ain't that good, is it? Uh, it's one of the things I have noticed about some of these boxes. You have to, like, almost sort of bend the hinge back just a little bit so that it then stays up on its own. The other one did, though, but... Now, um, <clears throat> there was something I was going to say that I think the, the box lid fell on my hand. So, these boxes, right, they don't look very different, or any different, to other boxes that we've seen from the Raw Mint. Yet, it's taken close to 18 months to get them to us and made. So um, whether you've been following this or not, I don't know, but I'll very quickly summarize it. Um, essentially, we were supposed to get this with coin two, which was about a year ago. It didn't happen. And then coin three came out and we didn't get them then either. There were a few updates that were communicated by the Raw Mint and they were essentially our suppliers um, are struggling with the world and all of the logistics and supply chain issues that were happening over this last sort of 18 months. Um, yeah. Not entirely sure that's completely a valid excuse. I don't I don't want to say the Raw Mint's like lying, because I'm sure there were issues in terms of that, but I think perhaps that the Raw Mint might have been able to communicate the whole situation a bit better to their customers, because there were a lot of people who cancelled their subscriptions because they weren't able to get the box. And I feel rightly so. You know, if you're sold something with the premise that you'll get that box at issue two and be able to like it's really cool to be able to build a collection in these boxes over time. That's the whole point of them. And to not be able to do that, I think, was a shame for quite a lot of people, and it put people off a little bit, which is a shame for this series, because I do think this series is a really good one and will be a great little sleeper set for the future. So, there we have two Raw Mint boxes for the Tudor Beast series. And uh, I will, I'm sure, when I get my next Tudor Beast's silver coins, uh, show you them up to, up to date in the box. And then every time we get the new one, we'll be able to go for it and complete it. Now, oh, complete, that's a good question. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten slots. So this would suggest they're not planning a completer, but we all know what will happen. There'll be a completer, let's be quite frank. And um, we'll have to work out what happens in the boxes for that. Uh, I think, you know, it's like the first series, the Queen's Beast, they, they basically sold it as it's not part of the Queen's Beast series. It's just a standalone celebration of the Queen's Beast series. Um, and I think it annoyed a lot of people with the uh, with the lack of spaces in display boxes that had already been made by third parties. But hey, you know that is what it is. So in terms of the boxes, I think they're really good. They're nice quality. They're they're you know they're boxes. They're great. Bit of feedback for the Raw Mint. I'd have liked to have seen a, a Tudor Beast booklet in here, or at least maybe a little 
a uh, piece of card that would have said two ounce silver proof or one ounce silver proof box. Um, because I got to the invoices, I've, I've looked at both. They are the two ounce silver proof and one of the one ounce silver proofs. So I'm due quite a few more boxes. I'm going to get two or three at least more of these. Um, I think even no, we're going to have two more silvers. We're going to have the quarter ounce gold and we're going to have the one ounce gold boxes. So I'm due four more boxes. God knows where I'm going to store them all. But nevertheless, it, it, I suppose, look, we've got to count blessings where we can. We have the boxes here. My feedback to the Royal Mint would be uh, communication definitely needs to be better um, about things like this when you when we get issues. I think customers will actually be more understanding if you just are upfront and honest with them and go, look, you know, there have been issues, we've got things wrong, or perhaps the boxes weren't right the first time, so we've gone back to the supplier and we're making them make new ones. Uh, I think most customers would be completely understanding about that. Um, and I was in this fortunate position where because of my influence in the world of YouTube, I, I had contacts at the Royal Mint that I could ask about this, and I was told, but I don't think the mass populace was told. People waiting for these boxes, and it hurt the Royal Mint. It did, and that's my feedback. Um, which will lead me into next week's video, talking generally about communication uh, from the Royal Mint and how I view it. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts. Um, we'll put some more precious metal on the table, shall we? Because I know you all like a little bit of shiny to finish a video. Um, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. Thank you to my ramblers if you've been watching for 11 minutes about me talking about boxes. I mean, it's fantastic, the job that I do. And if you are watching to the end and you're still wondering or interested in this Mint Era Britannia, then head on over to the Silver Forum, links down in the description below. As I said originally, if you click that link on Friday or Saturday morning, you probably won't be able to see it unless you're a paid member of the forum, but by Saturday around three o'clock in the afternoon, it will unlock for everyone and you don't need to be a paid member to bid. All you would do is sign up to the forum, create a profile, and then you can bid away. Uh, I think these are gonna go for anywhere from, I think about 400 to 500, I think is an honest, guess but i could be wrong it could be peaked out roughly where it is now but at 320 for what i think is pretty rare i mean we're talking less than i think there's going to be less than 100 of these out there but i could be wrong um so yeah anyway links down in the description below thank you to my ramblers really appreciate you sticking around to the end we'll see you on the next one and by the way the next one's a good one i've been working hard on something super secret super special super exciting and uh, it's out on Sunday and I can't wait to share it with you all. So look out for that. But we'll see you next time. Thanks always. Well, thanks as always. See you on the next one.